Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 6 of Cracking the CSWE. In this video, we're going to be looking at assembly modifications opposed to part modifications, which we looked at in the last video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be reminded of any future videos. And without other way, let's just jump right into SolidWorks. Before the video starts, I just wanted to say sorry again for the delay. I've gotten a new SolidWorks license of the same year, the 2020 license. However, it's an educational license, so my presets have been changed, meaning the interface may look a bit different. As well, when you download parts from the links in the description, you'll get a warning that the part is educational and is not used for commercial purposes, uh, but don't worry about that because this is just for practice. In the assembly here, which you can download in the description, we see two swept bosses. Let's say we want to add a new part into the assembly, which represents a pipe that connects the two. What we first want to do here is create a plane that is on both axes of the swept volumes in the assembly. To view the axes of the assembly, go to your view type options and turn on visibility of temporary axes. Then we can create a reference plane with these two axes. Luckily, in this case, the two axes are coplanar. The case in which they are not coplanar makes this case much harder and we're not going to cover that in this video. Once the plane has been created, we can go to the insert part button drop down menu and select new part. This will allow us to add a new part into the assembly, directly made in the assembly. Once we select new part, we need to select a plane on which the first sketch will be created. We will select the plane we just created. Now we are in the part edit mode for this part we made, which we can tell by the transparent nature of the rest of the assembly. Let's create a path for the connecting pipe. First, let's create two lines in each of the fittings, which would resemble the part of the pipe that sits inside the fitting. Next, let's create a spline to connect the two. We will only create the spline with two points and then click and drag the spline handles to make it a more natural shape. As well, we can add some tangent mates between the spline and the lines. In an exam situation, there may be dimensions or an image to reference to make the desired shape on the exam. As well, there may be a need to use the Fit Spline button, which fits sketch segments to a spline. We can use this feature with the Constraint option, making sure to select all three sketch entities. From here, we have our path. Now we need to make the profile. We can create a new plane, which is coincident to an end of the sketch and is well perpendicular to the line of the sketch. Another way to do this would be to make it parallel with the pipe fitting face. Now on this plane, we can create our new profile. Dimensions for something like this would be given, but let's just put some arbitrary values. Now we can create a swept boss, selecting the profile and the path. This completes the part. We can as well add a new material. From here, you would be able to evaluate the part in whichever way is asked on the exam, from center of mass to maybe the weight of the part itself. But again, that's going to depend on what the exam asks of you. Thank you so much for watching episode 6 of Cracking the CSWE. In the next episode, we're going to be looking at assembly drawings and flows of material, which are great for documenting your assemblies. So, I'll see you in that video.